Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Rich here, back at it again. And this is really more of a first impressions on the Laco Hockenheim chronograph than it is a detailed uh, review. And I'll come back soon with a much more detailed review on the Hockenheim. But for right now, it's more of a first impressions because this is a watch that I've been really excited about to feature. I always thought this was a very handsome watch and I'm very glad to report that it is really attractive in person a very striking watch and very substantial in the hand this is a very weighty watch but there's also a lot of love shown on the finishing of the case here just a, a really uh, great first impressions and i really think that is attractive i really like that silky black dial and the splashes of red on the tip of the central seconds hand and inside each of the registers um, to me red is a very nice energy color so it gives a nice pleasant touch right here one of the things that I wasn't clear on because on the LACA website it wasn't clear is the material of the uh, bezel inlay. I just was hoping that it wouldn't be aluminum because to me aluminum is a little soft and I'm very glad to report that it isn't. I also don't think that it's ceramic because ceramic has that very distinct uh, sheen to it, that very polished finishing. So I think this is actually steel, which I'm fine with that. And I think LACA did a very nice job. Uh, with uh, this bezel inlay. You can see it's really thick versus a very thin piece of inlay, uh, even that ceramic, um, even if it was ceramic. But ceramic doesn't need to be very thick. It's very resilient. But a nice job here on the bezel inlay uh, by Laco. Another area uh, that I wasn't sure how I would feel would be on the calendar wheel. So a lot of watches that are made in another country um, offer multi-languages, right? And English is usually almost always an option. In the Hockenheim's case, the language is only in German, and I am fine with that. I actually prefer that, and that's because it actually forces me to learn another language, even though it might be only seven uh, new words for the days of the week, but that's still more words uh, than I would have learned before. So anytime we can learn anything new, it's always a benefit. So on the calendar right here, it says it's Zam, which is short for Zamtag, which means Saturday. So right there, uh, I know one more word than I did before. I'm certainly not ready to order a Porsche in German or order off a German menu, but it is still uh, learning another language and I am always gonna support that. So really nice job uh, with this Hockenheim. And this is uh, one of Laco's higher end models. This is priced at $2,400, but it can go up to $2,550 depending on the movement because there are two options. This uses the ETA 7750 automatic movement, but there's a regular base movement and then there's a top grade movement. And the couple of differences are with the hairspring, it, the base movement uses a Nivarax 2 versus an Anacron and the regulation. The base is regulated to three positions versus five positions. And what does that mean? Well, you get a, an accuracy of about zero to plus 10 seconds a day with the base movement or zero to plus eight seconds a day with a top grade movement for $150 more. To me, not huge differences, but worth noting. So again, the Hockenheim chronograph is one of Laco's high-end models. And if you compare that to one of Laco's other more affordable models, such as the Augsburg II, there's gonna be some differences. Uh, the Augsburg II has been serving me really well. I've had zero problems with it, and it's been very accurate. I like the gray dial. I just like German-made watches. But I believe this uses the Miyota 821 automatic movement. But, you know, at the top of the video, I said how substantial the Hockenheim feels in the watch. You can just tell that this is a premium feel in the hand. It's not quite the same on the Augsburg II. It doesn't quite have that, that, that same premium feel in the hand. Another big difference is with the finishing. And while the finishing on the Augsburg is quite nice, there is certainly anything, uh, nothing wrong with it, it lacks the depth and the refinement of the Hockenheim. And I think we might be able to get a little bit of a comparison right here. Both um, have brushed finishes on the side. You can tell it, on the Hockenheim, it is just more, ref much more refined, a lot more layers of, of love, I guess you could say, that's been put in into this. But you would expect that from a watch that costs about five times more uh, than, a, than a different model. Just the, the f polished finishing on the Hockenheim here is a nice mirrored finishing here. Just really well done on the finishing on the case of the Hockenheim compared to the uh, Augsburg too. But, you know, again, this is priced at about $450 versus uh, starting at $2,400 for the Hockenheim chronograph. Uh, I am really looking forward to spending time with this and getting to experience it. I just don't have any 
anything to worry about, I think, with this watch um, that makes me wonder how this is going to hold up. It seems to be all there, very solid. Uh, this uses a nice calfskin strap with a uh, folding clasp here, really, really well done with the branding there. So there's anything that's alarming um, that I'm worried about. Uh, it, you know, at most it was how I feel about uh, a watch that only is in German for the days of the week, but I addressed that and I'm actually looking really forward to that. And I'm really looking forward to enjoying my time and experiencing the Hockenheim chronograph, which is what I'm going to do right now. Thanks guys. And I'll see you soon.